what about winter? How are, how are you finding them, and like where do you start? Yeah, so winter time. Um, and and feel free to, you don't have to like spot burn or like, no for sure like, that's what I was kind of like yeah. I could tell you specific areas yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. like I say mid lake yeah. uh, for the most part for so the winter time I will start mid lake um, or mid upper lake and then basically just like look both directions for them so mm-hmm. from a winter time perspective I'll never go south of the one twelve bridge okay um, so that eliminates a lot of water for anybody even wanting to try to do it mm-hmm. in the winter time yeah um, typically. As it gets colder in, like, January, things like that, they'll move, um, what I've found at least, again, it might not be the case, but I see them move deeper and deeper as the winter continues to go. Okay. Um, So in, like, November, you might catch them, you know, in 40 to 60 feet of water. By, like, January, you're catching them over 140 feet of water. Jeez. 150 feet of water. Yeah. Um, With a fly rod. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and now huh, let me explain that. You're not getting your fly 150 feet deep. Mm-hmm. You're looking for these fish that are suspended, basically sitting underneath shad piles. Got um, it. So the later the winter also gets, um, the more the shad will continue to group up. Okay. So you can argue, that's why I said like December is the month. Yeah. Because um, they're not in super deep water but the shad are grouped up at that point. So, okay. like, if you're doing it in October, November, you have so many different, like, small schools of shad that are all trying to congregate together. They can't, like, I don't know, they can't find each other. or I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> yeah. But so you have small all brains. these. Small brains. They miss yeah, their friends. Exactly. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. So you have all these um, fish that are so spread out. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of, like, groups of, like, one and two and three stripers that are keyed in on, like, small, um, small groups of shad. And once you get towards like December, and you have these, you know, half acre wide um, schools of shad that that you'll get, you know, now a hundred stripers yeah. on this group of fish. Yeah, they're looking at that. Exactly. They notice. Yeah. yeah. So that's why, like, you got to check the deep water because a lot of times those shad might be, you know, five to twenty feet deep, and those stripers might be just below them. Um, with the right conditions. Sometimes they'll bring those shad all the way up to the surface, mm-hmm. and that's when things can get pretty western. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it's it's so interesting. So once you find them, um, how hard is it to like stay on them? Man, that's hard. Unless you're out there literally every day. Yeah. The problem with that is, um, it's weather based. You know. Okay. So, like. I'm very particular on the days that I like to go striper fish now, um, just because I, you know, I have the ability to fish different days, um, a little bit easier than just the weekends. Right. Um, so I, I try to find my like cloudy, like no wind, calm days. Um, but the weather changes things very quickly. So like you get a really strong wind and those shatter up at the surface, like it blows those shad into coves or up against banks, things like that. A lot of people don't realize that, or at least people that are trying to get into this fishing don't realize how much the just the wind can factor into mm. like what the fish are eating. Because mm-hmm. that's what you have to chase. You have to you have to almost go into it knowing like I'm not chasing stripers, I'm chasing shad. Okay. Um, that's the mindset. Um, so a lot of people would be like, eh, this looks pretty good. Like, let's stop and fish here. It's yeah. like well, are there any shad? Yeah. Like, not really. It's like, I mean, I keep moving, buddy. Probably keep going. 